Hello and welcome back to Coffee Break Archaeology. You join me today at the next episode in my Let's Play series of C14. Let's call this episode 1.5. Now I've had two attempts so far at doing episode 1 of uh, this Let's Play series, both of which haven't been a great success. In the first episode I only recorded my face and forgot to actually record any of the gameplay. And in the second, uh, and in that in the second episode, or the remake of the first episode, I was quite unwell and forgot to impart some important information. So, going to uh, call this episode 1.5. And after you've sort of listened to this information, then you may know a little bit more about why I'm doing it, and you can always go back and rewatch the first episode with that in mind. So first off, let's de deal with why a uh, archaeology channel is uh, doing let's plays. Now you may have seen my recent blog on Archeo Gaming. If you haven't, then I'll do a little bit of a run down here, but I'll also provide a link to that video down in the description as well. So Archeo Gaming is the archeology span of and in video games. Um, looking not just at the video games themselves, but also at the development and also sort of gaming culture. It both views archeology span of games or, or games themselves as uh, artifacts but also as landscapes, artificial synthetic landscapes that humans create and what we can tell about them through that. But I don't want to give too much away. I do have a series looking at Archeo Gaming, as I said I'll link that down in the description. Now, again in the first video I didn't really provide a lot of information about the game we'll be reviewing, the C14 dating simulator, archaeology dating simulator game. Now Archeo Gaming doesn't just um, deal with games which are about uh, archaeology but also games in general but as uh, some of you sort of read some of my blogs up to and including Christmas uh, will remember that I am very interested in how games depict archaeology and what says a little bit about archaeologists and I thought looking in this one it might be quite fun to do. Now there are some other uh, games that I am going to be looking at. Uh, again some of you may have seen some of my other media posts but those are Archaeology X which is sort of an excavation simulator and Barrow Hill Curse of the Stone Circle which is sort of a horror game dating back from early 2000s or, or sort of mystery game around uh, an a fictional archaeological site down in Cornwall but has a lot of interest in archaeological uh, practices and a little bit of information about archaeology in there as well. But a little bit about C14. I'll just, I just have loaded up the uh, Steam page here. C14 is an Atomi dating sim that combines archaeology, friendship and love. You play as Melissa Flores, a third year anthropology stu student participating in a summer archaeology internship. This field school takes place in Belgium, over 5,000 miles away from your native California. OK, let's talk about your comfort zone and the fact that you'll be staying in an unfamiliar country for two months can be nerve wracking. But you can't pass up such a learning opportunity. You get to excavate at an authentic prehistoric site which has uncovered Neanderthal remains in the past. Maybe you'll dig up some bones or even unearth tools that were manufactured by early humans. And of course, you might forge friendships and romance during your stay. So it lists as its key game features. Play as Melissa, anthropology student aboard on a summer, summer internship. Romance DeAndre, Hendrik, Kylo or Shoji. Dating sim gameplay with optional archaeological minigames. A beautiful manga artwork and original soundtrack. A different cast with some very unique... Can you have very unique? You're either unique or you're not, aren't you? Anyway, semantics aside. So, I did find this game on Steam and I did pay uh, £15 for the game. Um, I've not played it all the way through, so we are sort of doing this game together. I did play a little bit advanced of doing the first episode, so I uh, learned a little bit about the controls and what's going on, but only for about an hour or so in total. So what made this game da jump out to me? I was quite intrigued by the sort of uh, the play on words, C14 dating, Carbon14 dating, and uh, it's a dating simulator. 
And generally, I thought it was quite weird that someone has made a dating simula simulator about archaeology. Um, so, you don't get much customization really. You play as Melissa. You don't even really get to customize your appearance. Um, it talks about an original soundtrack. I actually found the sound quite irritating, so we'll probably keep that on low or, or quite quiet when we actually start playing the game. As I said, I'm not going to start it right from the beginning, so I'll give a very quick recap of what happened in the first episode. So we arrive from California in Belgium and we arrive at the site um, and to find out that the one other person we knew uh, is not coming. The only person we know there is our anthropology professor. Um, and we sort of go through the initial stages of finding out about the site, introduction by the key site director, and we're introduced into the area which will be excavating. But that's about it, really. That's what's covered was covered in the first video, and you can find that. I'll also link that in the video description. Now, as well as not getting uh, much customization and a slightly irritating soundtrack, there also no voice acting in this game so I will be doing a lot of talking uh, but I will not be doing any voice acting because I can't voice act so without further ado let's load up the game and uh, continue our progress let's actually get off the store page Computers are being a bit slow, it's a bit old now. So it may take a while to load up. And of course, most importantly, I do have coffee for this recording. Because I will be doing a uh, lot of talking and will need to uh, lubricate the taste buds. Um, another feature of these videos is I do collect hats and wear hats, so I'll be wearing lots of hats, mainly because I have really, really messy hair. It is taking an abnormal amount of time to load. Ah, oh, here we go. So, let's just double check for settings. We want it on full screen. Uh, we'll set the music volume a little bit up and the sound volume a bit up just so you can hear it. Uh, that's okay. So let's load our game. So it's this game file in particular we're interested in. And here we go. So it is now loading. Dawn of the third day. Week 1, Tuesday. And I'm enjoying a pleasant jog early in the morning. Since I don't know much about Coriens, I stuck to the familiar path between the train station and the museum. When I returned, I saw people mingling in the open canopy. That meant there was enough time to eat breakfast before the trek to the cave. I swung a leg over a bench and settled into my seat after pouring myself some apple juice and grabbed an orange and began peeling it. Did you have a nice jog? Ooh, who is this? I wonder. Startled by an unfamiliar accent, I glanced upward, greeted by a friendly face. I did. It was a short one, though, since I don't want to risk getting lost just yet. I don't know the area very well. The roads can be pretty windy, too. You think you're heading east and somehow end up going north. Oh yeah, I noticed the streets aren't all clearly marked. The names are mostly on buildings. Speaking of names, I'm Melissa. Pleased to meet you. I extended an arm and he accepted my handshake. Deandre, enchanté. Wait, you're from around here? Si, ça? It's just... Oh, what should I go for? 
I'll, 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 I'll say that. Your accent isn't French when you speak in English. Did you learn it from somewhere? I studied abroad in New Zealand for a few years and picked up their manner of speech. That makes sense. Well, it sounds lovely. It's charming. It's a charming accent. Seriously? Sweet as. I was concerned it'd be hard to understand considering it's not my first language. Glad that is not the case. I'm grateful you took the chance. For a while it seemed like no one wanted to talk to me. I worried if I was somehow unapproachable. Not at all. Many people here are shy in the beginning, but warm up quickly. We were actually intimidated by your present at first. Huh? Me? We all thought you were some high sky prodigy, high school prodigy archaeologist since you had obviously flown in from another country. Eh, uh, me? A, a prodigy? Oh no, I'm just a regular university student working on anthropology major. And I don't look like a high, high schooler? First year? No, second year. Well, I guess technically third. You? Fourth. I've sort of fallen behind on electives on a summer and a summer one seemed the easiest. We noticed a few students getting up and bringing their dishes to the outdoor wash area. John Jay reached into his back pocket and then pulled out a phone. He glanced at the display. Speaking of which, if we like if we'd like to pass, we should start heading out soon. Cave or lab? Right now I'm on dishwasher duty, but I'll be working in the lab afterwards. They're getting they're still getting around to approving people's photographs, including mine. Again, thanks for talking to me. I really appreciate it. It's no problem. I know what it's like to be in a new country and away from your folks. Once we finished breakfast, we stood up at the same time. We momentarily gazed at gazed at each other in surprise. He was much taller than us and expected. Near Kyla's height. Now that I think about it, most of not all the students here were easily a few inches taller than me or more. DeAndre hammered his fist into his flat palm excitedly. Oh, that was the other reason why we thought you were a high school student. Hey, I'm only slightly below average height at home. DeAndre grinned in amusement. When we left the canopy, I spotted a middle-aged woman frantically sh asking students something in French. What's going on? Helena, the receptionist here, is looking for volunteers, but hasn't been easy. I offered to cook all week, but it's not a one-person job. I have a partner for today, but not not any past that. Cherie did encourage me to participate. More like I would be marked on my helpfulness outside of archaeology too. Hmm. I can volunteer for tomorrow. Oh dear. Would you really? Sweet as, Mel. He said it yet again. Now I'm curious. Sweet as? Sweet as what? Oh, it's Kiwi slang for awesome, fine or cool. Anything positive. Ah, I see. Then could you let Helen know that I'll sign up for tomorrow? Sure, can do. Thanks. Well, what do you think, guys? I think he's pretty cute. One of the people we can romance, potentially. I'm glad my photograph got approved. Now I can finally start digging. So this is our digging area that we looked at in um, the first episode, uh, which we were surprised at. It's a prestigious area where uh, Neanderthal remains had been found before, Neanderthal jaw, if I remember correctly. For me, it looks far too neat to be a part of an excavation area, but I guess we haven't started digging yet. So where do I start? From the top? So Sherry is our professor from California. Right, you start at the top and work your way back 25 centimetres, then you proceed downward until you finish the layer. Some people prefer digging back a few centimetres, then working their way down. Either way, as long as you're making progress. For now, we have to remove the couche de merde. Using her trowel, she etched a line near the top of the square. The dirt at the very top was hard and compact, with footprints all over it. All this is out of context now. People have trampled on it, and it's been exposed to the air for so long that it's better just removed, just to remove it all. Couche de merde? Wait, that sounds familiar. To... Mirdav, therefore. 
Exactly, it's the lay of crap, to phrase it mildly. Just dig back 25 centimetres and a few down when it comes to this layer. It, it will make work in here much easier. You still need to document for this, but you don't have to worry about the details. At least this way it will give me a chance to sharpen my excavating skills. I discreetly glanced in Kyla's direction. He must have been super diligent since he had already stripped his layer away. Hesitantly, I took a bigger trowel and started scraping, amazed by resistance I had to apply more force to make a dent. Do you want to review the cave mini games? Oh, yes, we do, don't we? Let's view the tutorial. Let me give you some tips. Now, before we dig, we should first remove the top layer. It's been treaded on and its soil is now mixed and dis distributed. You can see how dark and compact it is compared to the lighter soil and pristine sediment beneath it. Not only that, it's hard to dig through and all clumpy. Already testing it out? Someone's eager. Remember, you only need to remove a few centimetres worth. Try it out. Note that the top row has a 5 beside it. This means 5 cells must be chiselled, blacked out in an un interrupted sequence since it's a 5 times 5 grid you can clear a full row so shall we do it 1 2 3 4 5 just like this perfect a clean line make sure you don't remove too much or you might be digging in the sediments you'll be recording is there a way to prevent that I mean I can easily distinguish these two layers but I'm sure it won't always be this obvious you can always use the tip of your trowel to etch into the sediment. It helps to separate the stratigraphy, so you don't have to consistently check to make sure that you haven't dug into a new layer. I'll try it here as a practice run. The etch tool is on the left and is a useful option. It marks cells that do not need to be chiselled with an X. Try etching the entire row third row. One, two, three, four. There we go. Great. See how there's a zero behind this row? That means no cells need to be chiselled, <coughs> blacked out. You can leave this one as is. It looks like the top layer ends here. I agree. Now you, you know, now you know how much left you need to clear away. So I guess we click to the chisel. And we chisel, taking out this entire second row. That's perfect. The Kushta Murd has now been stripped away, revealing the pristine sediments underneath. Now, the top columns are all marked with a two. This means the column had two cells that needed to be filled in. Okay. If you click check, it will tell you if you've correctly chiselled the cells. In the future, you can also click skip to pass on the puzzle you can't solve. You unlocked a new journal entry, Kush de Merd. Hey, it looks like I've completed everything. Now I feel like a real archaeologist. Oh, I can remember my first experience stripping back the Kush de Merd at Silchester before the beginning of the excavation. That was really, really tough. That's wonderful. I'll be helping the other students out, but if you're stuck, don't hesitate to ask for my assistance. If you're unsure of a row or column in the future, click on the numbers on the sides or top or bottom. The corresponding row or column will be correctly filled out for you. You can use these hints several times per puzzle. The game will keep track of how many hints you have left. careful though if your stress levels are too high you won't get as many hints does that make sense so far I think so mini game rules are a bit weird but we'll see how it goes here I'll show you a little more now that the Kush de murder is gone I can finally start digging right you sound eager but your hand is shaking are you feeling okay 
I'm good, just just a little nervous. Since this is a 120,000 year old square, I'm worried I might accidentally throw something of extreme value away. As long as you stay aware and don't dig through the sediments carelessly, we use microstratigraphic approaches which require high spatial control. Why don't you point out the sediments? Oh, and dig out into this one. The separation is unmistakable. Everything still looks brown to me, but here I go. The puzzle has multiple numbers in some rows and columns. It might seem a little daunting, but you can start by solving the second row. The row requires two sequences of two cells each. You can start to chisel them together, or you'd have four for the entire row instead. Okay. This means that there needs to be at least two, at least one unchiselled blank cell between them. There, how does that look? Perfect. The first sediment is 2 2AL. This is an alluvial deposition, so it is so it'll be silty and easy to work through. Not many pebbles or grainy textures here. Excellent. Now let's focus on the first column. See the first one, you already filled it in with the second row. This means that the adjoining cells need to be filled. You can etch the cells around it. Now what remains? This column still requires two cells to be chiselled. Go ahead and finish it off. Good job. See if you can complete the rest and click check whenever you think you're done. Right. So. That's right. That's not quite right to try again. So we'll do do one. One, two, three, one gap, one. Because this column needs to add up. So I was only focusing on bone on columns. So uh, three and one. So really, this is like Sudoku in many respects. So this... Oh, and I didn't actually do this row either. So this just needs one, so that can go there. There we go. Just needed a few adjustments. You unlocked a new row, stratigraphy. I think I figured out where all the sediments are, Sherry. Agreed. Do you still have your photograph? You can fix up some of the pencil lines you put down before. Usually you need to have your photograph approved by one of the staff members here, but since we're shorthanded, I'll be overseeing the photograph submissions as well. I agree with Strigafy marked out. You can outline the pencil with a permanent marker and start digging from the top once you're done. Thanks, Sherry. While you work on that, I have a quick question. Hmm, ooh, intriguing. Questions. Did you bring your journal? I didn't forget it this time. Oh yes, we forgot our journal in the first one. 
Wonderful. Also, have you talked to Helena already? She's a receptionist here and oversees volunteers for cooking and cleaning duties. Uh-huh. As I recall, I expect you to volunteer since it will be for Marks too. Already got that covered. I volunteered myself for tomorrow. I'm glad to hear that. I was worried since she doesn't speak English and you didn't ask me for help. It's wonderful to see you getting involved from the very beginning. Uh, I'd like to do my share, Marks or not. Ooh. Again, I remember my first dig having to get involved with all the different tasks, cooking, cleaning, and of course cleaning out the portaloos. That was definitely not a favourite task of mine, nor anyone's really. Although the portaloos, what was in the portaloos often actually reflected what was being served, which was often quite disconcerting. I will let you finish your task. I'll mostly be helping other students here. Give a holler if you have any inquiries. I personally want you to get used to digging in the cave first before you transfer to the lab. Next week you can decide which one you'd like to focus on. I was always more of a lab person myself, but we'll see how things go. Generally students spend one week in the cave, one week in the lab, and then alternate. However, I think flexibility is very important, so I'll let you plan your days. Sounds good. It does sound good, actually. With the conversation finished, Sherry climbed a ladder, leaving me with a remote Kyla. Jeez, he dags so fast. I, he does have experience, though, but I wonder if I can even rely on him. So much for square mate thing. Pulling the earbuds out of my pocket, I inserted him and turned it on my music. Now let's get, let's tackle this uh, mucky layer. So how are we doing? Culture free, rationale free. Heavy, heavy, way too heavy. Why do I think it's a good idea to fill it to the top? Not only that, I had to climb two ladders, gripping the bucket handle with both hands. I managed to trudge forward to the wet screening area. Luckily, one space was free. I set it down the bucket, then placed a screen over the container suspended above the tub of water. I tried hoisting the bucket, bucket only to find it was too short. I was too short for the task. I kicked futilely at this sediment block until I realised it was faster to grab it and drag it next to the tub. Stepping on back, stepping on the block, I unceremoniously dumped half the bucket's contents trying not to overdo it. Once I had my labelled cup next to me, I grabbed a hose and drenched the compacted soil using my free hand to break up the globs. While I sifted through the items, I glanced at a person across from me. He tentatively poked through the red screen, unable to determine if any of the objects were rubbish or worth dropping in the cup. His arms obscured his hoodie design, although it seemed vaguely familiar to me. I watched him, and he happened to look up, meeting my eyes. Bonjour! Sorry, I, I can't speak French, so I'm not entirely sure if you can understand me. I didn't mean to blurt that out, but he averted his eyes briefly for a moment, though he didn't... I thought he didn't understand English and didn't know how to respond. Looks like he's blushing. He Hello? You speak English? Yes, I, I think I'm pretty fluent with it. Sweet. It's always nice to know I can talk to more people around here. I'm not confident with my French at all, let alone Spanish. I chuckled while I waited for a reply. However, he meekly nodded, then glanced down at his wet screening. Total opposite of Dondre, guess he's not a big one on conversation. Music is great, but I spent all morning beside super sociable Kyla. I need small talk, darn it. I don't know, I was always quite happy to uh, not have small talk. Yes, I'm new to all this. First time here as well? Yes, I don't know much about archaeology, so this is all new to me. I remember that feeling very much. Same here, I'm still deciding if this is what I'd like to do. It's a lot like it's a lot to take in. My head is spinning from all the info dumped on me in the past few days. Hopefully all my worries will pass on on whether I can do this or not, and I can enjoy the experience. Are you nervous too? I was incredibly nervous during my first dig. Can we 
find out his name so we don't have to keep on calling him triple question mark. Call him qu tri qu triple question mark for now. Um, a bit. For someone being thoughtful on how to answer, it was barely a complete sentence. I need another angle. What else could I say? Oh, here we go. What do we think? What are you taking in school? I love your hoodie. I'm intrigued by what's in the city because I certainly don't recognise it. It was going to be a general statement, but then a clearer look at it, at what he was wearing. Wait, no way! Some of the design was still hidden by his arms, but I'd recognise that logo anywhere. Oh my gosh, I love your Chronicles of Solidia hoodie. It's based on 20 masks, right? You've played them before? It's practically my childhood. I love the series, and it was my favourite one. Really? Mine too. I've always appreciated the darker direction the series took with it. Yeah, I loved the mysterious spooky vibe I had going. My favourite part was learning about the world through side quests. Now is this a really, really obscure Legend of Zelda knockoff? Or reference? I'm guessing you completed the Lover's Quest. What did you think of that one? Loved it. It was really sad and I felt guilty that I couldn't reunite them every time. I think I shed more tears over that than the actual ending. The NPC schedules were super detailed and I ended up throwing each character. Oh, now he's what a nerd. I agree. The main town felt livelier for it. I like how your choices could influence some of the characters too. I'm Shoji. Ah, oh, now we found out his name. Another person we can potentially romance. The eagle extended an arm and I flinched from the unex un unanticipated gesture. Sorry for my stumbling over my words. It's a lot to say all at once. Seeing my startled reaction, he hastily withdrew his hand and averted his eyes. Sorry. No worries, I just didn't expect it. Here. I initiated the handshake this time and realised how gritty and wet our hands were. He seemed to be aware of it too and we exchanged an apologetic look followed by a laugh. Uh, my bad, should have wiped my hand first. Not the best handshakes. Not the best at handshakes. <laughs> it's fine. The burst of zeal he displayed when we gushed over games quickly mellowed out. We realised each other's ha hand. We released each other's hands and he silently returned to wet screening. I did the same. Sometimes I'd glance up and sense he had more to say, but did not articulate them. I already forced enough conversation out of him for now. When he was done, Shoji tipped over the screen, dumping all the rubble which disappeared into the water below. After Shoji picked up his empty bucket, he lingered by the catwalk for a moment before, return before returning to me. Um, I'll see you around. Uh, he trailed off and then it hit me. I hadn't even said my name yet. Oh, it's Melissa. Right, pleased to meet you, Melissa. Likewise, see you later, Shoji. Yeah. He gave me a grateful nod before disappearing into a cave. He reminds me so much of myself. Incredibly shy, incredibly awkward. And not a great talker. Which is why I'm talking to people on the internet who I can't see or and do not know. Hello. I might as well finish up too. So, success. Once I'd finished preparing the plates and cutlery, I returned to the kitchen. Dondre stewed soup in a giant pot resting over a single burner on the stove. I'd quickly learnt that lunch always consisted of sandwich ingredients along with a serving of soup. Finished setting up the tables. Thanks Mel, I'm grateful that you volunteered and all. It's no problem, I'm glad to be of help. So, we are now on Wednesday, by the way. He tapped the top of the pot with the stirring, poon, st st stirring spoon to get the liquid off. Do you cook often? You seem rather skilled. I don't know if stirring soup is considered a skill. I think it is, that's about why I can cook. At least you seem, know, seem to know what you're doing. Hmm. <laughs> 
I mean, seriously, can, can, since first year of university, perhaps. I mean, before I could do the basic prep or throw frozen meals into a microwave. Once I moved to New Zealand, I sort of picked up cooking while living in the dorms. Eating out is pretty expensive and I needed to keep to a strict diet. Strict diet? I'm guessing you work out or participate in sports? You ain't wrong. Training and weightlifting are part of my regime and I'm a rugby player. Oh, that's neat. What position do you usually play? I'm a lock. I'm not good with rugby. I'm guessing you don't know much about about Union Rugby. Not really. Sorry, I know it's similar to football or American football, but without the padding. Um, basically, the locks provide power and heights. Break through the defence, jump high in line-outs, and sounds like every position and I would definitely agree with like that I, def I definitely agree with that sorry for any rugby fans out there although I did play rugby at school so I should really be better but you know I just did what I was told I lost you again didn't I at a line out what's a line out <laughs> well let's start with lock anyway locks have to get the ball at whatever cost he extended his arms pretending to reach for me and made a primitive grunt Aggressive must get possession of the ball. Well, not as aggressive as the flankers. You never really want to be tackled by those. I giggled, decided not to ask what a flanker was either, and gently shifted the topic. Where did you learn how to play rugby? Well, I grew up always playing it, even joined a local rugby club, but moved to New Zealand to hone my skills even further. Out of all the countries in the world, why New Zealand? If I recall, you went there to study, right? How is that related to rugby? I went there because one of our universities in, because one of the universities in Wellington offered a program that combined rugby, rugby culture with education. He grinned like a child, reminiscing about their Christmas presents. I got to enrol for the first few trimesters, along with free tickets to elite games and gym membership to where the top-notch rugby players trained. Not only that, I got to participate in their practice sessions. I learned lots down there. It was pretty sweet. Pretty sweet hands. It was expensive though and my visa expired. I guess it was inevitable though. And now I'm finishing up my degree in years. What degree are you working on? English. It all sounds pretty heavy duty. How do you balance both rugby and your English degree? You're not just focusing on your rugby career. As much as I love rugby, too much can happen on the field. One traumatic or hard-hitting injury and your career's over. Even with the best physio, you may not play as well as you did before. Ah, sensible. I figured if something were to happen, I could always teach English as a foreign language to fellow... The pot bubbled and Andre softly cursed as he grabbed the spoon and stirred it again to prevent the ingredients from getting from setting on the bottom. Phew! Nearly forgot about this. Guess time does fly when you're having a conversation. What's the time? I check my phone display. About time for the students to eat. I'll get the cold cuts and drinks out now. Thanks, this soup looks about ready. He turned off the burn and we focused on organising lunch. I glanced at Dondre as he happily hollered to the students coming down the stairs from the forest trail. Sounds like you figured things out. Now I got to focus on what I'd like to do. So what do we think we'll focus on? Culture free, rationale zero, empathy free, diligence zero. So this was Wednesday. Study, inquire, socialize, success. So week one, Thursday, it's starting to sound roundy, roundy over there. I could even hear hollowing and cheering over the video games and music. A large silhouette appeared near my tent and I lanked out my earbuds. Mel, are you around? Came Dondre's voice. Over here, I'm in the Euro tent. He gave the tent flap a knock, that's in the fabric. I, z I zipped it open and poked my head out. Something up? I thought you'd rather socialise than hold yourself in your tent. Want to 
break some language barriers. He held out a raspberry flavoured beer bottle and swayed it before me. Ooh, leading me astray with raspberry flavoured beer. Although by the end we may all be incoherent anyway. Well, that does sound a lot like uh, an archaeological dig in the evening. Oh yes, drinking, a universal pastime. Should I join in? Oh, what shall we do? Shall we party? Party responsibly or decline for now? I don't think we can really decline. That's not in the spirit of the game. And need to make some friends. Maybe we can find out more about Kyla or... We know quite a bit about DeAndre already or um, maybe Shoji. Party responsibly? That doesn't sound like an archaeologist. So let's party! I laughed and accepted the offering. Relieved that I recently checked my blood sugar levels. Ah uh, yes, because this is another thing that we found out in the first game that Melissa is diabetic and I always found out as an odd nothing there's nothing obviously nothing wrong with it, but it's a very odd character trait to add into a game unless it's gonna play an important role in the story, which I guess it may do, and it does flesh out the character a little bit, but it does seem an unusual choice. But there we go, we'll see what happens. So back to the game. Why not? I want to see how you guys party compared to California. Well, there's no oceans or white stands, white sands here, but we know how to have a good time. How do you know what I think is a good time, Don J? Eh? 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 I stood up and we clicked drinks. Still, I was a little nervous joining a bunch of strangers. At least I had Dandre to hang out with if socialising didn't go well. You're gonna force him to talk. Gonna force him to talk to us if socialising doesn't go well. It's not very socially responsible. I'm sure it will be fine. Oh dear. Oh, that was pathetic. I coughed and lowered myself unsteadily, almost falling, falling onto my rear in the process. My hand clumsily groped against the tense fabric, trying to find a way in. Where's the entrance? I spent the evening attempting to socialise, but it was fruitless. The whole time I awkwardly stood at the edge of the group or wandered around, unable to join in conversation. I ended up occupying my time by nursing a few beers instead of pretending to enjoy myself. A few beers instead. Instead, pretending to enjoy myself. Maybe I drank the last one too fast. I wasn't drunk, but I was definitely dizzy and lightheaded. Are you having trouble? Oh, Donjo. I poured against the green tent again and broke into a giggle. It was hard to control my emotions. I can't locate the doorknob. How much did you drink? I don't know, a few... a few more... maybe more of a... It was a disaster. It really was. No one talked to me. Realising my outburst, I took a deep breath to calm myself. <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm clingy and whiny when tipsy. Dawn Train knelt down beside me in concern and put a hand on my shoulder. Hey, um, didn't mean to leave you alone earlier. Got caught up talking to a few others and... No, no, it's not your fault. You're not obliged to stick with me the whole time. I should have checked on you at least, being new here and all. Yeah, you should have done. I shook my head, immediately regretted it as my balance went off. Killed her. Fortunately, Dondre hands were still on my shoulder and he ended up supporting me. Whoops, <laughs> I guess I should sleep, thanks. Dondre reached over and opened the green tent, but hesitated. I could be wrong, but this is your tent, right? Yeah, don't we have a your tent? Uh, yeah. Wait, this isn't my tent. Mine is I gestured to my left. Luckily, I asked, here, let's get you to your real bed. Ugh, sleepy, I know that feeling. Dandre, with one arm still around me, unzipped my tent. I felt a sturdy hand on my back as I clumsily crawled forward. My knee caught on the edge, causing me to flop over. I burst into a, to a giggle over my own antics. Dandre held the flat to make sure I was okay. Jeez, you're out of it. Here, let me move the ba that bag aside. I collapsed over the sleeping bag, my eyes already closed. A hand touched my forehead and brushed my bangs back. A little warm, but you should be fine for tomorrow. Ah, oh, he's so sweet. Or is he? Ooh, what does he want? I felt the fabric being tugged beneath me until it covered me. 
I hope you don't kick it off. It's going to be chilly tonight. I heard the tin zip up as I snuggled under the sleeping bag, flushed my flushed face, feeling better against the cool pillow. Bonne nuit. Good night. Oh, bonne nuit. I sat at the table munching on a piece of toast. It was pretty packed as usual. So this is week one Friday. I was located near the end while the live live conversations took place in the middle. A short glass slid into my view, water rippling in it. Morning, sleep well I hope. I decided not to bring up our whole wrong tent incident. I did. I don't even have a headache. Ah, instead of consuming too much, you drank too fast. I picked up a glass and took a sip. Thanks for water. Merci. Doin. My pronunciation is atrocious. I haven't done French in uh, 15 years. 15 years. Think of it as a small apology for last night. Hmm? Oh, don't worry about it. You're not my babysitter, and I should have been more aware of my drinking. Thanks for the uh, escorting me back, though. I appreciate it. I did what any decent person would do. Besides, you're in a new country, and I think you're allowed to enjoy yourself once in a while. Party hard in New Zealand or something? Did I ever? I was glad... I arrived a month before classes started or would have shown in my grades. Uh, sensible. Also, I finally will be working in the cave. Nice. Were you waiting for your photograph? Yep. Some squares had to have their pictures retaken for better resolution. I may or may not work in the lab longer though. Mr. Dupont will be hurrying to approve other students' pictures too. You could always ask Sherry, I think she has some authority here too. Sherry? Sherry Keller, my professor? Oh, of course, the American Americans address their teachers by their first name. Is it different here? Really different. In fact, I think some students mistook Sherry for your grandma, a professor overseeing their students in an elective unheard of. No one calls their teachers by their first name, and it's always strictly formal. If you want to talk to your professor, it's by appointment only. Huh. I wonder how I do in an environment like that. That's one thing I miss about New Zealand. It wasn't as rigid, and i gotten used to it practically had the reverse culture shock coming back. There's a lot of things I miss in New Zealand. Planning to return there one day? You bet. Eventually, I started... You bet, eventually. I started saving up recently. Travel is darn expensive. He laughed at my nod of agreement. The plane tickets here alone had cl cleaned out my savings. Everything else was from begging my parents to fund me for the trip. Checking the time, I chewed the last of my toast and gulped down the water. I'll see you at the cave then. So we're back in the cave. So activities... Success and success fail. Or oh, I didn't really seem to get a chance to do that. Are you sure you'll be fine alone? Yeah, my parents got all concerned when they learned I no longer have a travelling partner. I was uh, strongly advised not to go off on my own since it's my first time being this far from home. Although I tried to be nonchalant about it, my sulkiness still surfaced. It's probably for the best, however, I'm sure you'll make friends and be able to venture out more. If you'd like, I can ask some of the students to see if they're interested in hosting you on the weekends. Me? I'd hate to impose. I know you're reluctant, but it would be nice to spend time with students outside the dig site. True, and see more of Belgium too. It's the same page couldn't make it. Where are you staying anyway? Oh, at the as colleagues, I've known him and his husband. I've known him and his husband for years. I would bring you along, but it's a small house, and she trailed off, and I nodded understandingly. I did not want to impose on her catch-up time with her friends. 
With the museum being completely locked up when Augustine leaves, everything's safe with a back entrance so you can access it. You can lock it from the inside at night. I imagine you'll be sleeping on the second floor. Yes, Augustine already set up an air mattress for me and I moved some of my belongings. Hmm, I think we've gone over everything then. There's leftovers in the fridge and the Wi-Fi will remain on. I heard the laboratory door opening and closing and Augustine flashed me a warm smile. All the other students had left for home for the weekend and it was just us three, soon to be one. Now they were ready to part. Melissa, I assume Sherry has gone over everything? Yes. Wonderful. Although this is the first time in many years someone had remained here alone. There was an ominous yet playful, sm playful smirk and I could not help but be wary. Why? They are scared of the wrath of Neanderthal whose bones we found. I think I'll survive these 48 hours, Augustine. What a brave girl. I hear it gets very eerie here at night. We exchanged goodbyes and I heard the clicking of the front of the front door being locked. When it got very quiet, I pushed the thought of ghosts out of my head. I have a whole museum to myself. I bet not many people can say that. Having uh, worked for museums and being one of the duty managers for Warner, I can assure you being in a museum by yourself can be quite eerie, especially late at night. Although I have never ever slept in a museum. I'd just like to make that clear. Uh, the lights are on. Is someone here? What's all this? There were multiple wooden trays laid out on the centre of the table. Each contained various rock samples along with paper slips labelled under each one. Again, I still maintain this lab is far, far too tidy. I have seen no archaeological lab that tidy ever. I approached and peered over the trays. Calcari de schist Gress. Were they studying something or would this be part of another upcoming lecture? Oh, let's be risky. We're not. No one's here, of course, so why should I ask? Although, are we alone? <sighs> let's find out. Curious, I picked up one of the shinier rocks and held it up under the ceiling lights. Na aha non pa touche. Startled, I placed it back and glanced in the direction of the voice greeted with a disapproving frown. I tried to remedy my blunder. Oh, je suis désolé, je ne parle pas français. He looked at me in surprise before cracking a smile. Ah, you must be Sherry's student. He approached me casually and stood beside the table. Yes, I'm Melissa Flores, studying under Sherry. Pleased to meet you. I couldn't help but think I got off on a rocky start with him. <laughs> rocky start, because he turns out to be the geologist and we've been picking up rocks. Yeah, rocky start, never mind. <clears throat> he offered his left hand and I accepted it with a firm shake. Hendrik. Hendrik. Ooh. You can he at your service. Hendrik, the geologist, Augustine's nephew. That's me. I was supposed to be here earlier, but I was caught in a landslide of work back in Germany. <laughs> Get landslide because he's a geologist. Oh, never mind. Thought I'd catch up on a few things before Monday. He jutted his chin towards the samples. Sorry if I seemed uh, aggregated. <laughs> aggregated. We cut there. Never mind. Some people don't put them back exactly where they should be, and it can be a mess. That's understandable. I'll be more mindful of that. Feel free to look around if you like. Merci. I picked up a rock, the one labelled Calcary. The material was everywhere in the cave. Limestone. I placed it down and examined the one beside it, labelled shale. Where did you get this collection from? From one of the cabinets? It's mine, actually. Many of the rocks are the ones I've dug up or personally found. I thought it'd be nice to have some examples to show the students here, especially if they can't tell the difference between shirt and shale yet. 
and what is the difference? He eagerly motioned me over to the tray and picked up a dark rock and offered it to me. It felt grainy in my hand. First off, shale is composed of silt and clay and it's very soft rock. You've probably seen shale at road cuts or by riverbanks. And it's a shirt, you can easily note the waxy luster and it's much harder than shale. I held up a sample in my other hand, it also felt smoother than the shale, almost like glass. This is what you need to keep an eye out for, a lot of stone tools were crafted out of shirt, or, well I was going to say flint, but flint is a type of shirt. Fortunately they tend to stand out like new when you uncover them. I can tell you've given this lecture many times, I'm guessing most students here have never worked with rocks before. Yep, many are into art, computers or music. I returned, sorry, I returned rocks to the rightful spot. I should really differentiate my voices for characters and description. I'll work on that. What were you doing in Germany? Hendrik. Pretty much what I do here. Supervise excavators, examine and compile soil samples, figure out the stratigraphy. I essentially chalk out a map of the cake. Chalk out because he's an archaeologist, a uh, geologist. Again, it's, it's, they're not funny puns, are they? I essentially chalk out the map of the cave, study the sediments and its history. Melissa, that sounds difficult. You think sedimentary formations would be more straightforward? Older on the bottom and more recent on the top? You'd think, but geology is never... You'd think that geology is never that easy. Um, how best to describe this? Do you like cake? <sighs> of course I like cake. What is with these puns? Cake, of course I like it. He chuckled at my pun. At least he appreciated the silly effort. You'll be able to follow along then. It's pretty sedimentary after all. These are just terrible puns. What are the chances that you've traded... Oh, no, I don't even know how to start to pronounce that. Prinzvergetentort. That's not even remotely. Very low. Non-existent, in fact. Then Black Forest. Less layers than I'd like, but you get the idea. Yes, I'm familiar with it. It works as long as I picture a multi-layered cake, right? Exactly. Cakes are like basic sediments. Consistent layers and patterns all around. Unlike cakes, stratigraphy is a complex puzzle. Hendrik made multiple slices in the air with his hands, gradually lowering the elevation of... gradually lowering the elevation each time to emphasise the point. Layers are slanted due to how they were deposited, whether by alluvial means, weathering, freeze for gravity, ca gravity cave-ins, the list goes on. And then, just as sediment starts to settle, a river or flood may come in and wash the top surfaces away, leaving nothing or portions of the same layer in isolated pockets. Badgers and other burrowing animals cut through layers disrupting sediments further, or something drastic could take place, like an earthquake creating faults and misaligned sediments. Therefore, it's up to me to figure it out. I hope I didn't bore you. People have always said I'm married to my job. It wasn't born at all, honest. If anything, it made me realise how much work goes into understanding the cave's history. Hendrik, it's definitely not easy, but I enjoy the challenge of piecing information together. Since I'm here, I'll be available if you have any other questions or inquiries. Can you finish the last, uh, last sentence like it was a well-rehearsed routine? How long have you worked here? M me? Uh, let me think. Nearly four years now. I helped my uncle during the summer and then hop to a few other caves depending on their excavation schedules. After a glance upward, his eyes widened and slapped his forehead. Ah, I'm supposed to be in Namor soon. I hope I, I didn't startle you earlier. My uncle did mention there'd be a student staying here on the weekend, but it slipped my mind. 
No, that's fine. I was. It was nice finally meeting you, Hendrik. Likewise, I'll be sure to ask you if I have any other geology questions. That's what I'm here for. I'll see you on Monday. I mean, he doesn't even offer to stay a little bit just to say hi. Or just to, you know, keep me company. Starting with week two. So, what are we going to do? Let's go here. Um, no, here. I want to stay. Here. Let's search lights. Tuesday. Cave. Study. Social. Cave. Okay. Let's do cave again. What should I do in the afternoon? Oh, I met. Uh, volunteer. No. Study. Okay, no. Volunteer's got to be right. Okay, volunteer. So. Okay. Volunteer. Weekend museum town and email. Or explore the museum. I oh, know I've got that. Town. Evening. Let's do dance. Why not? Let's see how this week pans out. So, yeah, basically, something I've got to say, you plan sort of each week out and you try and complete these different tasks and these sort of relate to your stats, culture, rationale, empathy, diligence, stress levels, and journal. So, there we go. So let's play that out and see how things go. Oh, chocolate hazelnut, you're worth all the extra insulin. When I was done, I rolled the bread up and bit the end. My mouth glued shut as I chewed while the spread smeared my cheek. Glad I was eating breakfast alone, I was being sloppy. That's pretty much how I eat all my breakfasts. Unknown voice, ooh, bonjour. Huh? Someone likely pecked me on the cheek, the person immediately pulled back and hastily rubbed my face while he did the same. Uh, DeAndre, I was stuffing my face. At least warm me next time before you kiss me. I could say the same. What? Was with the kiss anyway. It's how we greet friends. Usually the cheek kissing goes a little smoother than this one. He eyed my breakfast and snorted teasingly. Cute, Mel. Hey, I wasn't expecting everyone to arrive so soon. Did you drive here? We took the train. It's only It only stops here every half an hour, so you either arrive early or slightly late. Before I could question the we, DeAndre tapped the side of his cheek. Um, you still have some. You too. Still, did you dunk your face into it? I did not. Your timing was just atrocious. While we were both cleaning ourselves, I noticed Kyle observing us with a deadpan expression. He frowned in disgust and disappeared around the corner with his belongings. Dandre sighed, rubbing his temples like he had an impending headache. I don't think he likes me. Hmm? Something happened? Well, do you remember that rowdy night? Um, vaguely. Well, after you went to bed, a bunch of us started playing catch, I may or may not have nailed Kylie in the head with the ball. Was he okay? Yeah, he was fine, if upset. I tried to apologise, but he wouldn't hear of it. Now, he wouldn't hear it. Now he probably thought I was shamelessly flirting with you like some full-time playboy. That's what you get, Dandre, for going around kissing people on the cheek. I know it's a French thing, don't mind that. Sorry, just one slight interruption. I'll be right back.
sorry about that. Um, I could edit it out, but I'm not going to bother, if I'm honest. Because I like keeping it real. I don't like doing too much editing. So, where do we get to? Oh, yes. Dandre shamelessly flirting. Oh, you aren't? I can't pour that wink, can I? Part time. <laughs> Kyla seems to be the type where first impressions are everything. I agree, I didn't exactly start off on the right foot with me either. Ha, ah, so we're both in the same boat. About the ball incident. Leave it to me, my square is next to his anyway, so I'll be able to talk to Kyla any time. Really? It's no big deal, but let him know I apologise for that. A few other students tricked, trickled, trickled in, and I finished my breakfast before there were any more mishaps. My eyes are often slower than my mouth. Anyway, where did you stay this weekend? I furiously chewed on my oversized portion, but DeAndre flashed me a patient, I'll wait, smile. Coffin, I simply tapped the table since I couldn't talk. Here? How was it? I survived. I tried to add a bit more facial expression in it, but I don't think I can really match. When a car pulled in, I knew Augustine and Sherry had arrived. I waved to them as they got out, although inwardly I wanted to whine to Augustine about the whole ghost thing. After Sherry and I greeted each other, she handed me my journal back. Be sure to read the comments in the journal when you have time. It will give you an idea of how you're performing. Thank you, I will. Also, since this is your second week here, you know, now have the opportunity to pick lab work if you like. Oh, right. I'll notify Hendrik. He handles the lab 101 here and can explain the procedures to you. Nice to see my options have opened up. There's sure a lot of stuff and tools here. I perked up as Hendrik tried that, tapped a whiteboard with his pros prosthetic fingers. His speech continued in French. Oh yeah, I didn't really notice that before. He does have a prosthetic hand. His lecture was occasionally interrupted by polite giggles or groans and he would grin at their reactions. Hendrik loved to deliver puns in every language I'm used. Once the explanation wrapped up people collected their plastic bags each with a sheet inside some barely contained any material while others had huge bones encased in tinfoil i grabbed a decently sized one with mostly smaller items and fished out the fish along with a wrapped item is it your first time doing lab work asked hendrick melissa yes sherry's gone over the procedures with a slide presentation, but it's different seeing it all up close. Hendrik, if you'd like, I can clarify a few things. I thought it'd be easier to do a little one-on-one -on -one instead of repeating myself in both languages and taking up more time. Really? Then... So what do we do, essentially? Let's go. Let's start with that. Can you break down the lab process in its simplest form? Clean objects, document them, repeat. That's it. That's it. That was sure, short and sweet. Short and sweet, just like me. When you've worked with many students with varying degrees of interest in archaeology, it helps to be concise. It's my own take on the KISS principle. Keep it simple for student. That's not the KISS principle. It's keep it simple, stupid. How to clean items. There's so many tools used to clean. What's the general routine? He leaned over and pointed to the plastic bowl with a sieve placed over it. Depending on how dirty the item is, use this to wash the majority of the soil off. If it's a bone, please don't let it stay submerged for too long or it will become saturated it will end up damaging the object especially if it's already cracked or flaking other items you may simply need to dunk and brush the wall and brush into the water if you're only cleaning a small section be sure to dry thoroughly using a paper towel or lint-free cloth whether you use 
that step or not it's onto using brushes and craft sticks I know about brushes but craft sticks they're great for scraping muck off without scratching the remains I'm partial to craft sticks myself but everyone has their own preference I was quite craft I was quite fond of craft sticks or, or things like a uh, blunted skewer ends as well and the things we use in conservation quite a lot and there is a bit of an argument between basic washing principles on excavation between archaeologists and conservators and what should and should not be done coming from both an archaeological and conservation background it's i'm not going to go into the details here future blog though if you use a brush be gentle and don't scrub too hard and there are toothpicks which are useful for cleaning teeth or porous items if the object is relatively clean to begin with and doesn't need water you can simply brush the dirt off be careful though some bones are too fragile to wash or clean use your judgment there will be a little trial and error at first but you'll get the hang of it don't worry i won't get upset if a bone falls apart really i would so i need a beat there says the geologist yeah that's a good point you're a geologist what if i drop a rock handle those with extreme care please <laughs> i will promise uh why a nib pen i picked up a the ink bottle and gave him an uncertain look why these it looks like it'll be a messy process and i've never used a nib pen before or quill it stays on the bones or stone better than regular ink ink pen regardless of the surface and you have better control over the writing i'm terrible at describing how to use one i think if you hold it slightly lower than a regular pen and lightly pull the ink should flow out evenly obviously don't dunk the nib into the ink bottle like cookies in milk also follow the number style i've written on the board I turned my head, studying the one to nine that went down in the vertical column. The three was flat on top, and the seven had extra lines in the middle of it. The one had a little hook at the top with a foundation. Is that to keep everything more consistent? That, and we don't panic the number fade, see? He approached the board and wrote out a bubbly eight, and then wiped off half of it, turning it into a three. This is why the same with the seven if we use part of it we won't mistake it for a one due to the line in the middle it's, ex it's extremely important to be able to identify its number when it, you're done jotting down the fiche number and you don't forget to coat it with a thin layer of clear nail polish to protect the ink make sure you let the ink dry first or it will become blurry need more coffee what happens if I mess up? I have a feeling whiteout won't help here. Ah, then this is the fun part. You can use the nib to scrape off the ink. Very useful feature. I don't re re recommend using it multiple times over the same surface, though. Then you'll end up destroying it. Destroying the very item we're trying to preserve. That is a very good point as well. What if the object is impossible to write on due to its size? Then place it in the tray cup along with the written piece of paper that has come with it although try your best to write in a partial line since it's possible to lose the paper over time please write neatly so I don't end up cursing your name next year when I get round to them go over the, let's go over the tools used can you sum up each tool and it's use for me sorry if there's an overlap it's fine it's important to clarify there's the water for sieve for and the bowl for washing. Other instruments include brushes of various sizes, craft sticks, toothpicks, cloth and paper towels for drying, so a lot of what we've already gone over. And when all written down and coated with nail polish, you can drop the items into the cups and set up trays over there. He pointed to the row of the wooden trays, like each wooden trays, each with cups super glued, super glued to the surface. 
some had bigger containers for the obviously larger objects that's new to me that system but there we go i don't think i should probably have a notebook in and jotting some of this down although i don't think my uh, excavation technique knowledge is that in out out of date although it's been a few years since i excavated but i don't know how specific some of this might be to the game later on and we might have to remember some things That way, we'll dry out. They'll dry out in the sun. I'll take care of everything when the labbock is done, so you don't have to worry about the rest. Any other tips you can think of? Um, any tricks or tips you can think of off the top of your head? Other than what I've told you, just be gentle and use your best judgment. Don't mix up the items, please, and be sure to clean up the utensils when you're all done. That's a very important thing about judgment and, and sort of using your own analytical ability, something I learned a lot when I was on site. Um, and again, to any aspiring archaeologists there, often it does come down to your judgment and your decision. So that, that that's a lot of responsibility that can be put on your head. Do things get contaminated? Isn't it harder to extract DNA after you after you wash them? Plus we're touching with our bare hands. Even just breathing while you're digging contaminates exposed material, it's virtually impossible to avoid tainting samples unless you catch it early while excavating. We'd rather have items clean so we can identify their morphology or possible Neanderthal manipulation of these items. Like burnt bone, cuts in the bone from flint, tool manufacturing, the stuff I hope avoided ended up in the vet screening process and has context marked and identified on the document. Yeah, yeah. Don't you don't want bone ended up in a in a, in, in in a wet wash or small finds, for example. So really delicate tools and and things like that. That's that's really not good. I was never guilty of that, of course. Are we good? I think we're good. I think we're good. We can do it, can't we, guys? We can do it. I think I got everything. Thanks for all the help, Hendrik. I like Hendrik. He kind of reminds me of Bill Weasley, though. Geen problem. Oh, for Pete. Really? Still more puns? I'll mostly be helping out in the lab, working alongside other students. Hendrik? Need help with anything? Could you supervise my first cleaning? Of course. I know lab work can be tough. Here we have some tools, toothpick, craft sticks, cloth and water sieve. Remember that we are dealing mostly with fragile objects and it would be too, far too time consuming to clean each one perfectly. The idea is to make the object recognisable. Luckily, if you're cleaning a piece of shirt, luckily you're cleaning a piece of shirt. So let's wash it off in the sieve. In this mini game, you must pick the tools to get close to the target force as possible each tool has its different force as you can see the revealed number is the tools force below it this will only happen to the first tool selected okay there we go I'm using the cloth to wipe it down Although you can't see the rest of the tool's forces, their values always go lowest to highest from top to bottom, left to right. Two, three, four, seven, nine. Okay, so one sixteen. It looks pretty clean now, just a bit of dirt in the crevices. You can select as many tools as you want however for this tutorial you can only pick three in total choose your best tool Ooh, oh chopsticks i thought it was three four yeah but obviously not but it was good enough i could have done mistakes i just forgot the numbering system see this is what i need to write things down and you know making Mistakes is all part of the game, isn't it? It's all fun. Although in this, I would probably, for chur, I would probably use a brush rather than a craft stick, I think. 
sort of firm bristle. Great, you can let it dry off before writing on it. I feel there's a bit of luck involved. Each game starts with a generally unrated forces that can be anywhere between 1 to 9. Again, values always go lowest to highest from top to left, bottom to right. It is. Some sturdy looking bones start crumbling as soon as you touch them and some are already in awful condition. I'd rather see a slightly dirty object intact rather than a clean one broken off, if that makes sense. The goal is either to match the target force or get within four points below it. If you go over, the object will break. So don't push it if you feel that is as clean as it will get. You got it. Oh, excuse me. I need help another student. No problem. Thanks, Hendrik. Now for the next one. And it's not a rock this time. Hendrik drifted away to answer questions from other students, while I gingerly unwrapped one of the items in the tinfoil. It was a tiny tooth with only minimal dirt attached to it, to the root. At least it was an easy one to work with. I dunked the toothbrush into water and began to scrub scrub it. I dried it off and then set it in the cloth, then uncapped the ink bottle and neatly dipped the nib into it. Gently, gently. I had barely touched the tooth when the nib, when a giant splotch of ink dis burst and penetrated into root. It now resembled a squished black spider. Ugh. I cleaned the nib and scraped the blotch as best I could. It seemed to work, but it also scratched into the tooth. It's harder than it looks. I'm already messing the ca missing the cave. Of course, this was where the real discoveries would take place, where everything was catalogued and identified for future examination. So a way of looking at it, I guess. That is one way of looking at it. I would also be graded for my lab work, so it wasn't something I could avoid entirely. Time to see if I can finish this one at least. Ooh, does that mean... You didn't give me a choice to go to a cave. Oh, right. So. This one is five. So we can get rid of that. Two. Hmm. So if I can fill in this row. So that's now complete. So I can chisel off that. Mark off that. Two and one. I do well. So that's one and one. Two. Oh, one. I need one in here. Shit. So. See, still make mistakes. The mini games. Although they are, are although they are about archaeology, this is not exactly. It's a very weird way of looking at it, I guess. That needs two. This needs one. That needs one and one. And this needs one and one. Hmm. So, how can I fix this? One and one. One, one. So, this needs two and one. So that's easy enough to fix, because this actually hasn't got as much in it. So if I chisel here, but this one, oh, and this is three in one. So that's fine. That's fine. 
There we go. What? Oh, incorrect. 3 1 1 1 What have I done? What have I done? Five, five. One and one. Three and one. That doesn't need to be there, does it? Let's just switch out. There we go, yes it did. It's because I got the wrong way round. Because I'm reading the wrong way up. The unlocked journey. It's below themes. Huh, I never thought I'd struggle to figure out something was bone or stone. I turned the thin brown piece over in my hand while Thumb rubbed off some of the dirt attached to it. Luckily, it left an imprint in the soil so I could return it to its original context but I did not want to measure something that would reveal to be worthless. I thought about asking Sherry but I had already pestered her with a million questions this morning and she was helping other students. Turning off my music I glimpsed Kyla. He was kneeling down and jotting something on his fiche using one of the protruding box as an improvised table. Clenching the unknown object I wondered if I could ask him moreover it would give me a chance to apologise on Don Dre's behalf. He was completely absorbed by his work, though. I tapped the rock's surface next to the paper to get his attention, and he glanced up in response. Sensing a conversation, he raised his hand to his cochlear implant and switched it off. Sorry to bother you, but I have a question. I held up the object and placed the pen down. It felt like a victory that I had captured his attention. What is it? I'm stuck playing bone or stone game. What do you think? He extended his arm and I placed the object and I placed the item in his outstretched palm. He held it up to the heat lamp behind us. The sign and an anticipation was agonizing and I was surprised. Was Kyla stumped on it as well? Just when I was about to inquire, he moved his hand to his mouth and pressed the object against his tongue nonchalantly. What? It's stone, and not worth recording. You can toss it into the bucket. I reluctantly held out my hand, and he dropped the slightly damp stone into my press. Uh, I kind of know, but I'm, I'm going to ask a question anyway. How did that work? How could you tell by doing that? Bone is porous and sticks to the tongue. This one didn't. Oh, I get it. That makes sense. Really not a thing you should get into, though. There's lots of other tests you can do, like using the end of the brush, for example, to gently tap. If it has a metallic ring it, to it, it will be a stone or similar implement. And if it's sort of more of a dull fud, then it could be bone or another organic substance. I tossed the stone into the bucket. Thanks, Carla. It will definitely be handy if I'm stuck again. Be sure not to rely on it too heavily. Use your eyes and touch first. It's more of a last resort method. Sounds like good advice to me. As something it was to cheat and lick each discovered object, it probably wasn't the most professional procedure dependent upon it. It's really, really not. Don't go lick objects. Oh, and there's another thing. Hmm? He seemed disappointed that I'd just stalled his excavation. Uh, I heard about what happened last week. When Dondre accidentally hit you with the rugby ball? Right. What about it? He apologises for that, so I'm going to see if I can do his look. Hang it. Hand there. Can I do a good Kylo, do you reckon? Probably not. An uneasy pause hung in the air, but 
friend Kyla gave a tiny nod. I admit I reacted rather harshly with him. It almost hit my implant, but it was an accident. I'll let him know I forgive him. You two seem close. Are you seeing each other? He said the last words hesitantly. Um, not exactly dating, but similar, less formal. Is he asking whether we are friends with benefits? Or is he just more inquiring about just having fun times with each other? I don't know. Seeing each other or going out are both acceptable. And uh, no, we're not doing either. Uh, let's be a bit teasing, shall we? It's always fun. What, were you jealous when we kissed? Why would I be jealous? I barely know you. Or Andre. His scowl, that's quite a scowl. And again, he likes this, he likes this position. And that's on my hand, isn't it? No, that's, that's there. Can't figure out his hand positions. Sorry, sorry, it, it, it was a joke. It's definitely not that, if anything. I was concerned about Sherry. Hearing Kyla speak her name so freely surprised me. Wait, of course they'd know each other. This was his fourth time here and Sherry visited yearly. I could imagine him seeing her as a mentor at this point. Why Sherry? A few years ago, Sherry bought a student for the field school. This person got heavily involved with someone here. Anyway, one day Sherry's student just vanished over the weekend. Ooh, mystery. Sherry contacted her parents immediately and they were furious after some inquiry and someone mentioned that she may have left with one of the Belgian students who planned a trip to Portugal. She didn't tell anyone, but I guess it was apparent to some of the more observant students. Basically, this student ditched the entire feed school and instant flunk. I wouldn't do anything like that. It wasn't exactly easy to get here in the first place. All these interviews, renewing my passport, saving up convincing my parents. I chose this internship for the experience. I won't blow it or cause Sherry to panic. She did place her trust in me after all. She's a good teacher. I agree. Ah, oh, he smiled! A smile! He finally smiled. I clapped to conclude our conversation. I'm glad that was all clarified. Feel more relieved? Enlightened? Yes, um... I'm sorry for getting the wrong idea about you and Andre. It, it's fine, no more misunderstanding. It's, it's cool again. Still, I felt progress had been made since Kyla had opened up a little bit. Ooh, things are progressing. You know exactly give me chances to volunteer though, so I don't understand quite how that's supposed to work. I was braver in it this time, and instead of sitting at the end of the bench, I positioned myself right in the middle hoping to mingle with the other students. I eyed a carton full of apple juice that was out of my reach. I did not want to stand up and reach over since that would seem rude. However, I wasn't sure if I could communicate clearly with people beside me. It was worth a shot though, and I did try to brush up on my French when I had the chance. I'll ask for it in French. Please pronunciation, don't fail me now. Why did I choose this? My pronunciation is gonna fail. Um. I hesitantly extend my fingers towards the item. Excuse moi. Chantal. Mm. Hmm? Uh, pouvez vous, s'il vous plaît, passer le jus de pomme? The girl clapped her hand to her mouth in shock, then excitedly gestured with one arm in the air. Oui, tout le monde. <laughs> Elle parle français pour tout répéter. Repeat, um, répéter, repeat. I stammered out the line, but finished strongly. Moments later, everyone applauded. Um, merci. As the claps died down, I felt a little more welcome here. It was rather encouraging. And again, sorry for my pronunciation. But it wasn't getting my juice any faster. 
It seemed that my thoughts were heard, and the juice cast and appeared beside my plate. I glanced up, and a redhead across from me smiled. Recognising each other, we exchanged a grin. Merci beaucoup. You're welcome, Joan. Oh. Joan, I'm Joan, and I met already. I'm Melissa. Chantel, sorry for the spotlight, but I thought a little cheering would help. It's fine. I appreciate it. I don't think I would if I was in that situation. <laughs> I poured my drink while Joan eyed me curiously. Chantel, she's... Chantel, she's... Chantel, she is from the States. Yep, California to be exact. Beaches, bikinis, movie stars and all that jazz. To come all this way, you want to be an archaeologist as well? I'm still considering a few options, but I've been enjoying it. It's incredible to be surrounded by all this history. What about you two? What degrees are you taking? Chantelle translated for me and Joan bright brightened as she raised her fingers close to her cheek and wiggled them. Mr. Burns impression. Music. I play the flute. Neat. How do you say flute in French? Chantelle chuckled loudly and managed to relay the question to Joan who giggled. La flute. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> I'm not either. But isn't it nice? It helps with learning a language if many of the words are identical or similar. If all else fails, save word in English, there's a chance we might understand. Are you monolingual? Um, well... I'm not sure if this counts, but... Solo hablo un poquito de español. Joan tilted her head while Chantel leaned in ardently. Hablo espanol? Mi vida en sana espanol. Um, tell there. Where did you learn it? My parents speak it, and I was much more fluent growing up, but I've sort of gotten rusty. Are you learning Spanish? Chantel pouted between a spoonful of cereal and sprinkled cocoa powder. I'd like to, but Spanish classes conflicted with my other courses. I want to go to South America or the Caribbean, so I'd like to master both English and Spanish. We both glanced back to Joan, who patiently tried to follow along. Chantel quickly summed up our conversation and Joan nodded. Chantel wants to dig underwater. I'm interested in underwater archaeology. Sadly, this elective is not what I'm looking for, but choices were pretty limited. I guess the cave can get damp occasionally, if that counts. I admit underwater ecology was not a field I'd given much thought to. And I definitely didn't either. I don't like being underwater. But I did use the cave when I was younger. Why underwater? Are you looking for underwater ruins or cities? Searching for pirate ships and sunken treasure, looking for Atlantis. Uh, let's go for looking under underwater ruins or cities. Searching for sunken cities? That's part of it. Well, that and pirates have always fascinated. Oh, I should have gone for pirates. I'm have to do this as a live stream one day and you guys can help me make the choices. I'm terrible at them. I'd like to excavate something like Port Royal, the infamous Jamaican city that was partly submerged after an earthquake. There's already been multiple investigations at Port Royal, and it makes me anxious. I really want to start and join something amazing like that. I feel by the time I graduate, everything about Port Royal will be studied and left alone, forgotten, like got to spy. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Archaeologists rediscover, re rediscovered Pompeii hundreds of years ago, and excavations are still going on. These things take time. Like Caelan, of course. I paused and let Chantel summarise our conversation again. Joan giggled and responded in a sentence so soft I couldn't catch it. What did she say? Joan says she's super slow digger. She's a sl super slow digger at Gothe de Calan. I was a very slow digger as well. I know no archaeology. Chantel helps. More like I reassure her, I'll help her. I'll help and then wonder if I should bother Mr. Dumport. Whether I should bother Mr. Dumport. I am thankful for Mrs. Keller. She's very patient. 
And I guess there's Hendrik now too, right? He seems pretty approachable. He is, and definitely geologisty. Oddly, I know what she means by geologisty. Chantel tilted her head towards the far end of the table, and I could see him socialising with Sherry and Augustine, obviously playing catch up. And he's Bew too. He's supervising labs now. Maybe they won't be so boring this time around. Have you done them yet? Only recently, Sherry encouraged me to focus on the cave last week. The lab's not bad, but there is a lot to take in. I find it, I find it tedious. Joan, am I, am I to the laboratory? Laboratoire? No, no, no. It is, it is tedious, boring. If you'd like, maybe the three of us could work in the lab together. That'd be fun. Sounds like a plan. Joan picked up her empty plate and did the same. It was nice talking to you, Melissa. Nice talking to you too. I'll see you both later. Ah, we finally met something. My grin didn't fade after we parted ways. It felt wonderful to branch out and introduce myself to more people. I finally made some female friends. Why did that take so long anyway? You have a new find text plate today. Good luck. Oh, we're back text. Oh, Jesus Christ. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, God. Oh, this brings me back, actually, this numbering system. Okay, this is turned out a bit more like Sudoku than I'd initially imagined. So this line is a complete zero, so let's work on that. And 10 is the maximum. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Just try and fill some of this in and see how things go. Just to give me an idea, one, three, one. That's got to be that zero, so those three can't be there actually. So those have got to be there. That's fine.
Okay, so I don't actually have to actually have the thing. So that can't be that either. So that it's starting to get the pattern how this is supposed to work now. Sort of. Oh, I mean it can't be there. That can be there. And that can be there. So that has to go there. So these two can be that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So those. And that can go there. That's done. Two, two, three. So that can go there. There's that four. Two, three, back, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Of course, so that can be there. That's fine. One, two, three. One, six, one. and I checked. One, 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 two, three, four, five, six, one, ten. Oh, this one's got two in it. Why is that? Is that needed one? There we go. Just one, one which I hadn't taken out. That took far longer than it should have done. You know, new general, wet screen a massage. Oh, okay, I just want this layer to be over with already. My feature is filled up and I got a ton of items in the plastic bag. 
I tentatively etched the soil with my smallest trowel trying to determine where this layer ended and a new one began. It wasn't as clear cut as I'd hoped. Hendrick did say sediments were rarely consistent like cake. I glanced at the glossy photograph comparing the felt lines marked on it to my progress on the actual square. I might as well pester Kyler again and get his opinion since we're practically working on the same thing. I lanked my earbuds out and turned down the volume. When I was done, I stuck my hand in front of Kyler's face and waved. He sighed but turned on his implant. Yes, what is it? I ignored his really monotone and tapped my square with my trowel to direct his gaze. I summarised my predicament. So any idea where the new layer starts? What's the layer you're working on now? I quickly referenced my photograph. Um, 3BMS and I'm trying to see where 3C, 3CL starts. Shuffling out of eye, I observed Kylie intently as he rubbed the excess dirt off his trail. With a neat precision, he scooped out a bit of the exposed 3BMS soil and placed it on his hand. After wiping the trowel on his knuckle, he examined the sediments again. Which spot are you uncertain of? Right here. This time he carefully dug out a sample of the possible layer, leaving a visible mark. Once both pieces were in the palm of his hand, he placed his tool down and leaned towards me. Curiously, I peered down. You're not going to eat it, are you? After a moment of bafflement, Carl burst out laughing. He shook his head and reassured me I did not expect his reaction and was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> no, no, it's not like that. Phew, for a second I was worried we were going to taste test it. <laughs> yeah, don't do that either. Never taste test dirt. Uh... I guess you could. The texture would be different, but I'm not a connoisseur of dirt. It probably all tastes the same, grimy with an, after, with an earthy aftertaste. Well, if you want to eat the dirt, be my guest, but I think my method will be a little less disgusting. The new smile faded and he became serious again. Here, your hand. I obeyed and he placed the first sample in my palm. Try rolling it into a ball. Now this is a good, uh, a good technique. I sandwiched it and cycled my hands, feeling the dirt tumble between them. I held... I held it up, however there were cracks already and I could feel it fall apart between my fingers. It sort of works, it crumbles easily though, very gritty. Sandy even, sand with a bit of, of loom. If it was pure sand it wouldn't form a ball in the first place. Now for the second one. I wiped my hands on my hoodie and I accepted it and repeated the same process. This time the dot held the girl for quite nicely and the te texture felt smoother. That is a very good tip actually. If you ever are unsure of different soil sediments and different layers, using the touch test is really, really good to distinguish between. Or can help distinguish. It's not necessarily always the, the best uh, method. Does it feel more, more like the same layer to you? Not at all. I presented a rolled up sample as Kyle uh, took it back. He started to flatten the ball into a thread but it broke before it could get thin enough. It's loom. Neat. You're good at this. He wiped his hands and then hastily glanced away as he grabbed his trowel. It wasn't anything spectacular. It's a method to test the soil texture. Besides, it's already it, it's already explained. What do you mean? The names for each layer, it's not a bunch of random letters and numbers. They follow, the, they follow a structure. They use terms to help describe the sediment, whether it's texture, colour or grain size. 3BMS, MS stands for Marn Sabulose, which means sandy loom. 3CM is loom. Huh, it really is more straightforward than I thought. Are there any sediments that you, that you hate excavating? The layers that are particularly rock and stone are pretty annoying and clay sediments clay is extremely adhesive and it's a pain to clean off the trowel yeah i dug through a lot of clay at silchester and and silt especially when it's sort of silty clay soils and when it was raining which it often did uh it stuck to absolutely everything even my beard i'm not going to say how it got in my beard but it got in my beard 
The bottom layers of our square contain clay. Great. I picked up my trowel and examined the two spots Carla had notched. Anyway, thanks for showing me the trick. Sorry I keep bothering you about this. I'll try to ask Sherry where I can. It's fine. What did you course before? Square mates? I believe I did. Why? Are you accepting the title now? We are working side by side and we might as well help each other out. More like help me out. I'm the one needing it. It's your first time here. No matter how often you read about it, it's not until you excavate that you really grasp how it works. True, I felt like I understand nothing, but now I'm getting more confident with the procedures. Kyle has simply nodded and he became completely absorbed in his excavation again. I inserted my earbuds and cra cranked up the volume. I could never listen to music when I excavated. I find it incredibly distracting. There was one other positive thing working beside him. I could play my music as loud as I wanted without distracting him. Well, hey, we did everything successful. You have a new find to excavate today. Good luck. <sighs> oh, this is a much simpler grid. So three and one, one and three. So let's try that. That could be the one. I say much simpler, we don't have any full lines which can make it difficult. So that's one and three. We need three there, two there, one there, and three here. And this one's two. Two and one, three. Three and one, three. There we go, got it right first time that time. Slightly more analytical approach to it. Ooh, faunal remains, we found some bone. Uh, well, we week two. Success. Oh, new find. Okay, so again, this one's going to be a reasonably easy one because we've got five complete here. So if one and one, that's not going to be that. Well, no, it'll be one and one. And this is another five. So there we go. So one and two, one and three, three and one, two and one. So that's two, that's two. That's two, that's five, one and two, one and three, three and one, two and one. What do we find now? Coordinates. Bucket swaying my grip, I made the way down the main catwalk, intending to return to my square. I paused when I saw Dondre staring at the dirt with a deep w w dirt wall deep in concentration. Every few moments he would raise his trowel but stop inches before the blade touching the soil, then retreat. 
He looked like he was about to defuse a bomb, but didn't quite know which wire to cut. Hey, Dandre, what's up? Startled, he turned towards me and he focused his exp and his focus expression melted into a relieved grin. Hi, just finished for tamassage? Yes, the layer I'm working on is mostly dirt, so there's not much to find. What about you? You seem a little hesitant. I'm starting to see why I delay picking an elective. Right now, I'm paranoid about digging through heaps of layers and not being aware of it. Hmm. He handed over his photograph and I balked at the number of pencil marks that were drawn and erased and redrawn along the ink lines that were dotted instead of solid. And then I thought I struggled with my square. If anything, his square was easier due to the rocks that clearly indicated the end of the layer. You cleared out the couche de mer nicely. That was the easy part. It was compressed and dark compared to the next sediments. They all blow into a, a blob of brown. How am I even supposed to tell from the part? Dondre? Let's teach them the salt test. There's always etching out stratigraphy, but that's only a temporary solution and not the most reliable. If you like, I can show you a method to tell sediments apart without resorting to photographs alone. Really? Sweet as! Here, I'll show you. Recalling what Kaya taught me, I made a notch in one of the uppermost sediments and, et and a second one in the layer directly beneath it. I presented it to Dandre, who glanced at it curiously, but also with a sense of expectation. We're comparing it? By testing the texture. Here, can you form a ball with this one? I tipped my hand over and he caught the first sample and he rolled it casually. However, the dirt failed to stick together. That's a very sandy layer. All right, here's the second one. Is there any difference? This one sticks together. He held it between his thumb and finger. It's a pointed demonstration. And voila! The colour is similar, but the texture isn't. Of course, this is more useful if the sediments are silty. It looks like half of your square is pure rocks. I think that's one whole layer. He descended his hand like an elevator to emphasise the scope. Anyway, thanks for that. Maybe I'll do a decent job here. I don't want to go back to the lab. Didn't like the lab so much? Ugh, it was boring and repetitive. Then again, so is excavating. But at least you're not getting high off ink and nail polish fumes. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Also, modellers would know that as well. I used to model. I bet not model as in dress up in silly costumes. I mean, gaming, modelling, Warhammer 40k, airfix, that kind of thing. Sorry, this is something you're striving for, and I sort of... Please, it's fine. Even if you don't like it, I'm glad that you're trying to do your best anyway. That's to avoid failure, and I'd hate to end up retaking the elective, especially one that goes for a full semester. I just want to graduate already. Three, three year degree? More like five if you're balancing work as well. Work? What's your job? I play for Perona RC. Uh, the RC sounds for rugby club, of course. It's not your university team? I always assumed it was like that. And you get paid for it? Wait. That's right, I'm a professional rugby player. My team participates in the top flight league here. No way! Why didn't you tell me this before? It's not that amazing, Mel. I certainly work my ass beep off for it, but I'm not one to brag much. Liar. Besides, even if I did, it's not as if you'd have heard of the team or even of the league. True, I don't even follow it back home. Is rugby popular here? Not as popular as football or cycling, but it's a growing sport. And aren't you required to train all year round or something? Uh, shoot, what did the email say? I think I... I think the training resumes in early August, but of course the coach is understanding of my situation. The season itself starts in the fall and runs until May. What, afraid I'll have I'll have to leave soon? Despite rolling my eyes, I chuckled at his question. Oh yes, tears on my pillow because my best kitchen part because I look because I lost my best kitchen in part though. I admit we make a pretty awesome duo. Sly person. He gestured to his square. Now that you've helped me not fail, I should probably stop distracting you. I don't want you to get marks deduced because you decided to flirt with the star player. 
That elicited, that elicited another laugh from me. We exchanged a cheerful goodbye, remembering to grab my bucket, and I made a beeline for the ladder. I was surprised to find out D'Andre was a professional athlete. There didn't seem to be much fuss surrounding him here. Wait, seriously? How did I end up here? I skidded to a halt to get a better idea of my location. My morning jog had been extended way longer than I'd intended. Oh, I'll try this off-road. I said I won't get lost, I said. The hoodie around my waist had gotten loose and I retied the sleeve while I walked briskly along the street. It was definitely high up. Beside me was a steep slope and I knew the cave was located somewhere below. It's already past eight. I should have found my way back, like 20 minutes ago. I, I sauntered closer to the slope and peered down, wondering if I could find a shortcut. No way, that's the cave down there. It was unmistakable. There was a protruding shed, half hidden in the rock, and I could see the warm path. I did not see any trail that descended down, not without weaving through the bushes and trees anyway. If I backtracked, I would be horribly late. What should I do? I really didn't have a choice in the matter, did I? I took one precise step to secure my footing before launching myself, half slipped, half round down the slope. Narrowly dodging trees, I stumbled and ended up bursting through the thicket of bushes. Do all these bushes have thorns? What's this? I skidded. I shielded my face as I ducked under the lower branches as I walkway came into view. I grabbed the tree trunk to stop my momentum, huffing and puffing heavily for my detour. Shoji watched me stagger into the wet screening room, scratched with Lee, stuck to me everywhere. Melissa, are you okay? I lowered one hand to a bent knee as I caught my breath. Straightened up, I mustered a weak smile while I wiped the front of my shirt. Yeah, yeah. Sandbag Sandbag relic switch didn't work out, and I got chased by a boulder on the way down. <laughs> oh, Indiana Jones reference. Maybe you should consider another career outside of archaeology, Lord Devike, or Lord Croft reference. I chuckled and untied my hoodie, throwing it on while I walked over to the stack of buckets. And give up the dangerous lifestyle, please. Soji went ahead and I collected the required items along with the documents on the layer I was working on. When I climbed down the ladder, I was surprised to find the excavation spot deserted. Oh right, Kyla's at the lab. It only took a quick survey to see that he was nearly done with his first 25 centimetre intervals. He clearly works fast. I wonder if I'll pick up speed. That is a worry. The catchy tunes of jazz plays through my earbuds while I concentrated on excavating. I wiped a sweat off my forehead, wondering why I was baking in a chilly place. Eyeing two heat lamps angled towards the square, I was certain they weren't the cause. Shivering, I rubbed the back of my head and shrugged my shoulders. It can't be because of that jog. That was an hour ago. I continued to scrape dirt from under the rock. However, the blade trembled and my, mo and my movements became shaky. I dropped the tool as dread settled in. Beep! I shoved my hands into my pockets, searching for the hard candies I had on me when my blood sugar ran low. I froze when I realised they were empty and I frantically patted myself down. I always carried emergency rations on me. How could I? Oh no. They must have fallen out of my pocket when I slid down the slope. Oh dear. This is bad. Not wasting time, I turned for the exit. My heart rate soared. Whether from hypoglycemia or from distress, I wasn't sure. I scurried up the ladder with a burst of adrenaline, but by the time I reached the next one, my movements were clumsy. I took a deep breath and continued, not wanting to slip. Should I alert someone? Who would know English? My diabetic bag. It would be in the tent since I, since I jogged straight to the cave. I skipped breakfast and failed to pick up and to pick it up too. I panicked, reflecting on my 
routine and how important it was to keep it rigid. Now I was paying for it. Melissa? A timid voice jolted me out of my inner rambles. I still clung to the lag ladder. Well, more like heavily leaned on it and didn't budge. So Shoji, you wouldn't happen to have something sweet on you right now? A candy bar or... No, why, are you hungry? I hoisted myself up another step, hand clinging to the railing of the catwalk. It was best to be frank before confusion of sim before the confusion symptoms settled in and it became difficult to speak. Soji, don't panic, but I'm feeling low. I'm type 1 diabetic and I need sugar now. He glanced at my medical bracelet. He felt guilty. I felt... I felt guilty for scaring him like that. However, he did not get as alarmed as I expected, or maybe he was better at hiding it. Should I get you something? No, it's better if I get to the museum before I trailed off, not wanting to bring up the possibility of seizures or fainting. However, the dangerous implications lingered and we both walked down the alley to the exit. By the time I was outside, I started to stagger. Shoji darted an arm out and held me close to him. Sorry. No, it's it's fine. No, it wasn't fine, but we had to keep going and each step felt cumbersome. My body leaned on him heavily and I forced myself to remain upright the best I could. I'm, I'm sorry, I would carry you, but the path is uneven and I, I don't want to drop you. We're almost there, just another step. I didn't know, but we made it to the kitchen area. While Shoji supported me, I heard Dandre and Kyla snapping at each other behind the counter. The words were in French, but even I could tell it, was, it wasn't it was friendly banter. Soji tried to address the other two repeatedly. Excusez-moi, on peut vous m'aider? When it proved futile, Soji took a step forward but stopped steady me. He was torn between getting their attention and leaving me to raid the kitchen. Before I could encourage him to go on, Oh, f from oh, for Melissa, forgive me. What? With both arms, he scooped me up eff effortlessly, and I let out a shell, shell out, which obviously caused quite a sight. Kyla, Dandre, Melissa, fate de la hypoglycemia, elle a besoin de quelque chose de secret. What? Dandre and Kyla exchanged shocked glances. Kyla went to the fridge with a cup in hand. Shoji walked over to the benches and set me down gingerly, his arm not leaving my back. Dandre tried to rush over, but Kyla barked out something harsh. Dandre retreated a few steps, his fist clenched tightly. I trembled violently as Kyla knelt down and futilely tried to place the drink in my hand, my fingers quivering. So he helped them to prevent further shaking and helped me lift the overflowing cup to my lips. The sweetness of the apple juice filled my mouth and I took tiny sips. It missed all this, I could hear the, a wide female voice following by Hendrik and Shoji exchanging dialogue in French. No one barraged me with questions while my condition improved. Kylo removed his grip and Shoji inched further down the bench and to give me more space. I licked my lips and wiped my mouth with an arm as I mumbled behind my knuckles. Merci beaucoup. My amount of gratitude could not be expressed in just two words, but I hoped that they could sense the heartfelt emotion behind them. H how are you feeling? M much, much better. I admit it's been a while since I've had an episode like that. What was that exactly? You looked like you were going to pass out right there and then. Don't pester with questions, she's still recovering. The hell, man? Who died and made you boss? Um, please calm down. The tension dissolved and the three looked at me worryingly. I cradled the cup in my lap and so I formulated an answer. I I'm okay now, honest. You guys don't need to get all sweet on me now. I'm doing fine. I let out a weak laugh to show that I was kidding. Dandre chuckled while Kyla looked appalled that I could act eerily about the situation. 
I guess you can't really sugarcoat these things, can you? That's life. You take the highs with the lows. Oh, these are terrible, terrible puns again. Ugh. You guys are terrible and unable to appreciate such high comedy. No, I, I think I'm with them. Kyla disappeared behind the outdoor counter again. We've showed you must mustard. I'm glad you're feeling better, though, Melissa. Um, you don't have to stick around any longer. You did more than enough. Right, I'll go tell Sherry what happened. Thanks. Now it was just me and Andre. The lightheartedness faded and he knelt down before me, placing a concerned hand on my shoulder. You sure you're fine, Mel? Is there anything I can do? He must have felt useless standing around while he watched Shoji and Kyla. Well, there's one thing. Could you grab my diabetic bag from my tent? It's a solid... It's solid green. You can't miss it. I need to check my sugar levels. Can do. Just sit tight. With one final pat, he stood up and walked around the museum building. He returned, carry, carrying the case. I set the cup and apple juice down before I unzipped it. Sent him lingering nearby, I gave him a reassuring laugh. I'm fine now, you can return to your cooking duties and stuff. Sorry for sending you off to fetch on a fetch quest like that. Fetch quest? We were interrupted by the clanging of pots, followed by an angry French curse. DeAndre groaned loudly. God damn it. Kyla fails at this. What, cooking? With an incredulous stare, he gave a helpless shrug. More like everything. I'll complain to you after. Focus on resting first. Later, Mel. Later. While the two continued their argument, I checked my sugar levels and sighed in relief. Still, I was exhausted after the hypoglycemic episode. There you are. Sorry about not finding you. I needed to get my glucose levels back up to normal first. No, I understand. Do you know what caused it? I didn't see you at breakfast. I I got lost. Not only did I jog longer than I intended, but I also skipped a meal. This made me sound more and more irresponsible as I went on, and and I lost my emergency candy. Please, please don't fail me. I wouldn't have dumped up marks for this. Melissa, I think you should get some rest. Let's focus on getting you getting your meal schedule back on track. Right. However, I'd like to talk to you about this later. My shoulders pricked and I could only stammer in agreement. What will she bring up anyway? I hope it's not about monitoring me. I think that wasn't a fail. You have a new find today. Good luck. Oh, another fucking beep. Another one. So, not all this is off limits basically. So going down, none of that can have anything in. That's got to have four together. That's got to have six, five and one, five and two, one and seven. So this is also zero. So there can be none in this segment. So this. So that has to be that.
I mean, that sort of has to be that. Oh no, so yeah, that can come off. And that can come off. So the six. So there's the six. So that's one, four, one, that's six, that's two, two, two. So this has got to be three going across. Three and six. Five and two. Do that is three and six. I miss. Six, one, four, one, two, two, two. One. Oh, that's right. Yeah. There's one right here. One, two, three, four, five. Three and six. One, two. Three, four, five, six, eight, six, two and three, two and one, three, one, four, two, five and one, five and two, one, two, three, five, six, ah. Oh. Oh, 
I've been recording for too long, I think. So I'm very quiet when doing these puzzles. I'm trying to figure out Stone Tool, aka Silex. I know you're capable, but what happened doesn't sit well with me. You'll be alone this weekend, and none of us are staying in Col in Colonnes. If you like, you can stay with Helen and me. I held in a groan. If it was only one night, I would be free with it. However, I felt like it would be inconvenient if I roomed there for three nights. Moreover, I wasn't sure if I'd really enjoy spending time there with the language barrier and age gap. I promise I'll monitor myself extra carefully over the weekend. I can set an alarm and wake myself up and check my glucose levels. I can leave food next to my bed. I can do a lot of things. I know you feel it hinders your independence, but you're my only student on this field trip. It's my responsibility to guarantee your safety and well-being. I want this to be a wonderful experience. Maybe I should cancel my plans and stay here just in case. At that moment, the office chair swivelled around and Hendrik casually veered from the lap from his laptop. Uh, if it's not a problem, I could stay. It'd be no trouble and I can catch up on my work too. Oh, would you? You're a godsend, Hendrik. Relieved, Sherry exhale, ex ex exhaled with her hand over her chest. From her tone of voice, it was like the choice was already made without my input. She must have known him for... A long time to place that much trust in him. But of course, M Miss uh, has the final say. Don't feel pressured to say yes because I offered. You know yourself best, and I respect your decision. My eyes darted between Sherry and Hendrick, one obviously more distraught than the other. I know myself best, huh? Then. Ah, let's accept the offer. I admit it had been a while since I had a hypoglycemic episode and it would be comforting to have someone occupied in the same building. It wasn't babysitting, it was simply extra precaution I reminded myself. Besides, Hendrik did say he could finish more work, maybe I could brush up on my geology education too. I also wasn't looking forward to another sleepless experience. Who knew a museum could feel so eerie at night and it really, really does. You said it was no trouble, right? Then I'd appreciate it if you stayed the weekend. Cool. Or coal, he wrote. Oh, for goodness sake. I'm glad we got this situation sorted out. Augustine walked through the entrance, announcing that he'd locked everything up, save the back and front door. All done. Now, has the discussion been settled? Augustine had been in the same room briefly when Sherry first addressed me Therefore, he had the gist of the situation. It has. Hendrik has offered to stay. Not a bad decision. He's behind on his work. Again, sorry about that. I'll catch up now. Tut tut, Hendrik. Then I'll see you Monday morning, Melissa. Hendrik. Right, take care, Sherry. Bye, Augustine. Sherry grabbed her purse and walked out while Augustine followed. He lingered by the door, his eyes sparkling mischievously. It might be a good thing for you to spend some quality time with a cute girl. Uh, Monkel, you know me. Oh, no, uncle, no uncle. Yes, okay. The chief archaeologist laughed and closed the lab door while Hendrik rubbed the back of his head in ba in embarrassment. See now, old man, you're a student here. Not. So, sorry about that. <laughs> it's fine. What's the work you're behind on anyway? Sitting back down, he rolled the office chair to his laptop and rested his hand on the mouse. Just some documents from last year that I still have to get round to. He made a few clicks opening up an application I wasn't familiar with. I worked here exclusively during the summer, so things can pile up quickly. Hendrik instantly brightened, brightened like a child as he whirled towards me. I'm updating my cryptography log now that I've got some new dates established. Want to see? Sure. W what is it exactly? Behold the entire strata of Gotha de Calan. He opened up a huge visual diagram. One side was colourful, 
all the earth tones from various dots and grey spots of various sizes. It took me a moment to realise I was looking at all of the layers documented. The top of the cavern pictured including a cute bat and uh, well, spellothems. Each sediment had its own assigned identification and, and information blurb, and that was just like the stuff going back to 40,000 years ago. Whoa, um, can you scroll down? I want to see where I'm excavating. Layer name? I'm almost done with 3CL. So you're roughly around 120,000 mark, closer to the end of the A-Main period, depending on who you ask. Either way, it's still in interglacial it's still interglacial sediments. Summers were dry and warm, winters mild with temperate and boreal trees. It was forested then, gets cooler around uh, here, the 130,000 mark, the beginning of the early I, I main period, that's a surge of pine and spruce in the pollen counts. The cursor circled around an indicated spot. Tons of clay layers, you'll have fun when you get to those. I didn't bore you, did I? Of course not, I think he bored me though. I had to read all of it. Actually, to be honest, I was surprised you knew so much about the pollen counts. That doesn't seem geology-ish. Panology isn't my strong point. Panology isn't my strong point, but it's useful when applied to geology, like geochronology and archaeology, climate change, etc. On the, on there. You pick up the interdisciplinary science as you go. If anything, I'm better at compiling the data. I leave the bio stuff to real experts. Now, stuff I focus on are the in situ and the we worked paleo uh, paleo souls along with there was a low grumble and I turned away from the computer screen. He chuckled and clicked off the program since the student since the students left dinner was not star was not served and it was getting close to the time I should be eaten. It's probably for the best if we stop there. I tend to get wrapped up in my work. Hope I didn't talk your ear off. Oh, for goodness sake. No, <laughs> I'll be pestering you all weekend about this type of stuff. You won't mind, right? This internship pr provided me with opportunities to converse with people of various expertise. How could I pass it up? By all means, you're a student here too. Ah. Wait, if I'm staying here, I should pick up some stuff from my place and food. I can't eat for stuff here. He walked over to the lab entrance and grabbed his keys off a small peg set. Are you in the mood for spaghetti? I'm not an amazing cook, but I already have the ingredients back at home and I can make it here if you don't mind waiting a bit longer. Yes, I'd love spaghetti. Then before I go, is there anything you avoid eating? Allergies, diet restrictions? I'm pretty flexible when it comes to food, but I don't eat real meat. Oh, red meat. Red meat. Julie noted. Back in a bit, Melissa. With a jingle of his keys, he departed. Leave me a to my own devices. I'll keep myself busy for now. A while later, Hendrik was making the sauce in the large skillet, stirring in basil and crushed tomatoes. The garlic cloves smelt heavenly. I was across the counter, elbows propped up whilst I watched him. I thought you said you weren't great at cooking. This is a four ingredient sauce. I hardly think that counts as anything above beginner level. Five if you count salt and pepper, or would that be six? My word, a six ingredient pasta sauce, I'm moving up in culinary strata. I hope you don't mind a meatless sauce though. Vegetarian? For a while now, you or do you only avoid red meat? You could call me a semi-vegetarian, I avoid meat when I can. Ah, the lazy vegetarian diet. Yeah, more like I avoid meat but I won't say no to grandma's early Christmas steak. Don't want to break her heart after all the effort she put into our meals. Some of my family members were baffled when I started making the switch. My old Bomar would would be all black in my day. We slathered everything in butter and deep fried it, and that was the way we liked it. 
Bomber, what's your surname again? Still don't know how to pronounce that. You can who? It's from the Flanders region, Flemish, uh, Belgian, Dutch is spoken here. Augustine is my mother's brother. If you're trying to figure out family relations, makes sense. And you know all three languages. That and some German, very meagre though. I got my Master of Science in Geology in Germany, and only English knowledge was required. Geez, you're quite accomplished. That's wow. Ah, oh, no need to flatter me. I don't think I'm that. Oh, shit and burning. He quickly removed the skillet and placed it on the wooden platform, followed by the bored pot of pasta. Grabbing the creased rag, he waved around the thick white smoke, then mustered up a sheepish smile. Smooth. Let's pretend you're still impressed and bon appetit. Shall, shall we? <sighs> The sauce was a tinge garlicky, but I ate it without complaint. It was a refreshing change from the weekend leftovers, and I was grateful for his generosity. We ate outside, focusing on our meals too much to talk. When I was done, I set the fork down on the plate with a clank drawing Hendrick's attention. You sure were famished? What are your plans now? I'll do the dishes. It's dishes. It's only fair since you made us dinner. You sure? Of course. Let me return the favour. You did more than your share. Besides, wouldn't you like to return to your work ASAP? He averted his gaze, confirming I was right as he found the offer too enticing to protest. Then, if you wouldn't mind. Cramming the remaining pasta into his mouth, he stood up, chewing frantically after arranging the fork on the plate. He casually passed it over and cleared his throat. Thanks, Melissa. I admit that's one of the drawbacks of living alone. You can't divide up the chores. He headed for the museum entrance. I let out a hopeless sigh, but my lips curled to, into a faint smile. Really? Plates in hand, I transferred all the utensils, including the skeleton pot. When I was done washing, I grabbed my pyjamas and other belongings from my tent and trooped up to the second floor of the building. As I got ready for bed, I wondered where Hendrik would spend the night, most likely downstairs, the laboratory was as spacious if you moved the tables. At least I wouldn't have to worry about ghosts tonight. Brr. The wooden stairs were cold against my bare feet as I stepped down the creaky panel, sleepily rubbing my... Sleep Sleepily rubbing one eye, I stopped in front of the lab door. After combing my hair with my fingers to give me a half-decent appearance, I opened a door, a crack, and peered inside. Hendrik, you up? The lights were on and I opened the door completely and stepped into the room. I spotted Hendrik slumped over his laptop, a few fingers resting on the keyboard. His face was obscured behind his arm, but it was evident he was sleeping. You didn't go, up to, uh, didn't go to bed at all, did you? I quietly approached him and raised a hand, wondering if I should tap him on the shoulder to wake him. Maybe it was better if I left him. I think coffee will be the perfect wake-up call. Besides, he did mention the disadvantages of living alone. Maybe it will be welcoming to wake up to some fresh coffee already made for a change. I didn't know what he preferred, but I reckoned regular old black coffee was a safe bet. I went to the outdoor kitchen and examined the coffee machine to determine its complexity. The life the light of it used coffee pogs, I picked out a dark roast from the capsule holder and prepared a single cup. I have my own coffee machine up there, in fact, although at the moment I am drinking from a cafe tier, as it's slightly more sociable during a uh, video recording. Although it's very cold now. I actually don't know how long I've been recording for, so I should wrap this up soon. When I returned, I pushed the keyboard out of the way and then gently shook Hendrick's shoulder. He let out a lazy yawn as he sat up. Once I set the mug down, his eyes lit up with interest and he glanced my way. Morning, thought you'd like a pick-me-up. So I wasn't sure how you wanted it, so it's plain black. He smiled and gingerly took, hooked a finger around the handle. 
It's perfect. I like my coffee how I like my job, dark and dirty. He grinned proudly to himself as I rolled my eyes at his joke, and he swiveled the chair gently in my dire- in my direction. Thanks, Miss. Uh, I really needed that. I practically passed out. Were you able to finish some stuff? Well, we'll find out once I start review when I once I start reviewing it. After a tiny sip, he set his coffee down and navigated the mouse. Pages and pages of letter M and commas. I don't think the Royal Society of Archaeology would accept this. While he corrected his work, I made a caramel macchiato and settled it. I settled into one of the chairs posi- positioned at the centre of the table. Centre table. We made small talk while we enjoyed our drinks, mostly about the work he accomplished or not, and how Hendrik never found the museum that creepy at night. What? You mean you never experienced the sounds of someone slowly walking up the stairs and then stopping? You don't seem like someone who would be terrified of ghosts. I was honestly never scared of ghosts until now. I'm blaming your uncle and his wrath of the Neanderthal joke. If anything was haunting the museum, it would be all it it be all the cave bears we dug up. He set the empty mug down next to his computer. I'm going for a shower. Even a geologist likes me to be dirt free once in a while. As long as you don't steal the hot water, it's my it's my one luxury when everyone else is gone. No 20 minute showers? Gotcha. Stand up, he set his, la- his laptop to sleep mode and he walked down the hallway, whimsically swiveling my chair towards the table. My eyes fell on a bright green bottle next to a small bag, judging by the washcloth folded beside it. I grabbed the bottle briefly, scanning the contents before bolting out of my chair. Hendrik, you forgot your shampoo! Hmm? Peering around the corner, he had already had a towel over his shoulder. I tossed the bottle underhandedly and he caught it with ease. Oh, thanks. You just spared me a potentially awkward moment there. No prob. Right, there we go. Beginning with week three, I think we will um, save our progress and bring this particular recording to an end. As I say, I don't exactly know uh, how long I've been recording for, um, but I hope you've enjoyed the rather long episode. Um, I will do my best to try and make it a bit more entertaining. Um, If you do have any uh, comments or uh, advice or feedback please do let me know in the comments as I said I am looking at this game in the sort of view of Archeo Gaming um, although that will sort of be more towards the end of the let's play once the sort of game is, is sort of finished or I've played as much of it as I feel I need to um, but I'll try to mention some things in game as well but there will be a blog series for each game that I'm looking at with a blog on my website www.coffeebreakarchaeology.blog there you can also find my series looking more generally at archaeo gaming as i said i'll link the first um article down in the description so you can kind of look at things i'll be looking at and also i will link the uh link to the first episode of this now you know sort of more where i'm approaching this from Again, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and until next time, remember, don't eat, don't eat each other.